What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Whatever News! In today's episode, we've got some stories to talk about. Okay, people, so we got seemingly an update coming in for the Chainsaw Man series franchise as a whole. We're going to take a look at it because, yeah, we, we're all dying for that next update that's gonna tell us yo what what's going on with chainsaw man but i got something for you got an update on the success of the promised neverland manga two pieces of demon slayer news one of which regarding the video game and one of which that i'm not sure as of when this video goes up if it's still going to be happening but a huge update for the Mugen Train film and being able to watch it from the comfort of your home right now I'll give you the scoop. We got an update for the martial manga, martial magic and muscles. We're going to talk about it. Big, big update for the Inuyasha sequel spinoff anime, Yashihime Princess Half Demon, and it's season two. Small update for, which it might be the final update, to be honest with you, for the Phantom Seer manga. Big, big, big update for My Hero Academia. We got a really, really juicy interview from Horikoshi from the latest issue of Jump Giga. Yeah, we, we got to talk about it. It's big. Small update for the Kuroko no Basket anime anime got a little update for the upcoming mappa series yasuke Ooh, i'm excited and unfortunately it seems as though another giant goliath that's been around for a long time now might be coming to an end it's definitely hinting that way based on this big update that we got so yeah we got a few stories to talk about without further ado people let's jump into another exciting episode of whatever it is The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. We don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. For no matter how you know, get it done. 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 Okay, people. So for starters, we got an update on the Chainsaw Man series. Now, y'all know in a recent episode, we just talked about a big interview that Tatsuki Fujimoto, the author of Chainsaw Man, did, where he was hinting at certain aspects of Chainsaw Man 2. Had me a little bit worried. I'm still a little bit worried, to be honest with you, but got a little bit of an update here for the franchise. Let's just quickly read. According to the Shonen Jump Plus app, it would seem that Chainsaw Man has a scheduled update for April 29th. It could be related to the second popularity poll results. There's no certainty about it, so please take it with a grain of salt and wait for full confirmation but basically that could mean that chainsaw man 2 could maybe possibly be coming at the end of april april 29th which is only two days as of the recording of this video from now we could be getting chainsaw man 2 again it could just be the popularity poll um which i'm excited for that i'm 10 billion times more excited for chainsaw man 2 like if this is what we hope it is oh my gosh i mean i'll be honest with you i'm gonna keep my fingers crossed but i'm not gonna hold my breath because i don't know i think they would have drummed up a bigger thing of like you know they would have maybe announced it already and shown and jump like hey go check it out so i don't know especially considering that we're going on break I think it's what golden week this coming week for Shonen Jump so I don't know if they'd want to do that I mean that would actually make a lot of sense to do it now that I think about it because all of you know the eyes for the One Piece manga my hero Jujutsu Kaisen are gonna be completely like yo what do we do we're bored there's no jump this week jump plus drops with Chainsaw Man 2 that would be insane again I don't know if that's going to happen it could just be the popularity poll but hopefully hopefully man it's been too long already <laughs> like it, I mean Chainsaw Man just ended not that long ago it feels like forever ago though i want more chainsaw man already come on but we'll wait and see either way hopefully it could be chainsaw man too i don't know they did do an interview recently it seems like they're drumming up some type of hype okay moving forward we got a quick update for the promised neverland apparently the promised neverland manga has 32 million copies in circulation worldwide so even with you know the abomination of season two seems as though the promised neverland manga still has continued to grow and i think majority of those sales to be honest with you is based off of the hype of the first season of the anime the first arc of the anime i think nine times out of ten most people know about the promised neverland because of that season two of the anime they probably didn't really get into it based on all the hoopla they've heard about it and yeah all the hype really came from that first arc that first season of the anime all of that jazz 
is where all the hype came from because yeah everything after that especially with the anime yikes but shout out to the promised neverland 32 million copies no small feat especially considering it was at the time when it premiered and jump especially starting something different for that magazine that is most predominantly known for battle series and like you know the occasional sg and romance but never really something dark like what the promised neverland brought forth to the magazine okay people so for starters we got two pieces of demon slayer news we're gonna start off with the video game stuff first because it's just a quick announcement of some characters that were announced for the upcoming demon slayer game that's coming to consoles apparently demon slayer console game adds sabito and makomo as playable characters this year's combined 22nd and 21st issue of shueisha's weekly shonen jump magazine revealed on monday that sabito and makomo will join the kimetsu no yaiba hinokami keputan video game as playable characters and based on the trailer they look dope i think we've seen enough of like the good guys in in the game you know what i'm saying like uh, as characters and things like that i think it's probably time for them to start announcing some of the actual demons that we're supposed to slay it's called demon slayer so that's something uh, that I noticed, but I'm still very, very excited for this game. That's probably one of the most highly anticipated games for me personally. And I'm wondering how they're going to handle the Mugen Train stuff. Like, are they going to have just like the game cover the first season of the anime and then later on add the Mugen Train as like DLC? I could see them doing that. It would be really annoying because it's like, fam, I want to play as Rengoku all bat. But I can see them doing that. I don't know. Either way, it's dope that they're still adding more characters. Although the last couple of announcements, like Udo Kodaki and, and these two is like, eh, all right. Let, let's get some demons going. Let's get some maybe announcements of the Hashira or something like that. I guess it also depends on how long they're going to support this game. Like, are they going to have a Demon Slayer Hinokami Kaputan 2 like a year or two after? Or they're just going to support it with DLC releases every other year or something like that? We got to wait and see. And while we're on the topic of Demon Slayer, I don't know while you're watching this video if it's still working. You tell me. You go check it out if you have a PS4. Because apparently the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film as of last night at the very least was up on the PS Store. The PSN. And apparently you could download it. You could purchase it on the PS4 and then watch it on your PS5. You couldn't uh, on your PS5 find it. But on the PS4 you could buy it and then go and watch on your ps5 if you want it or your ps4 or whatever but yeah uh, people are sending screenshots of them watching it of it being on the actual store and i feel a couple different ways about it i think that's awesome that they're giving accessibility to people that they're not able to go see the movie in theaters but i, I feel like maybe it's a mistake i feel like because you know they announced that it was supposed to hit digital in june why is it out digitally now so it probably was a mistake not intended to be out there again i could be off on that and also it's like yo fam you had everybody you dragged us all out to the theaters to go watch this because we were desperate to watch it only for you to put it out digitally you know a few days after so i feel a little bit a certain way i mean don't get me wrong the experience of watching it on the big screen is not going to be the same as watching it even no matter how big your tv is unless you have like theater sized tv so yeah but um you might be able to watch demon slayer on your ps4 go check it out let me know and i think that's just pretty big news considering it's a huge theatrical release that they just put out moving forward we got a big announcement for marshall magic and muscles apparently according to this it says marshall has officially reached 1.4 million copies in circulation i've seen some conflicting reports one of which saying 1.2 one of which saying 1.4 so it's around that area i'm gonna go with 1.4 why the hell not marshall i've said it before and i'll say it again this is the next big one to come out of shonen jump it's about time we have one because the post chainsaw man era has looked a little dry and considering chainsaw man is over demons there and they promise neverland like a lot of series has ended in jump they need a new hit and it looks like marshall is that hit because we're six volumes deep and 1.4 million not bad at all Marshall is coming fam remember Fenev told you I told you a while ago actually I talked about it when it was like less than 10 chapters in Marshall magic and muscles it's hype one punch man as type of series 1.4 million let's freaking go or one punch man x harry potter type of situation yeah so yashahime fans the sequel spinoff to the inuyasha anime you already know that it was announced that they're doing a season two well now you're gonna know when you're gonna be able to watch season two because according to this it says yashahime princess half demon season two confirmed for fall 2021 the inuyasha sequel spinoff anime yashahime princess half demon confirmed season two will be premiering in the fall season of 2021 the studio sunrise produced series premiered with season one october 3rd 2020 and ran till March 20th with 24 episodes. I'm curious. Okay, so fall confirmed. Awesome. Are they still going to do 24 more? Or is it just going to be 12? I mean, 
Now, I'm curious to see what they're going to do if they're going to keep the same episode count. I'm not sure. Like, I still haven't gotten back into it. I've heard great things about it. I heard that, like, the finale was awesome and heart-wrenching and shit like that. I'm still, like, I think halfway through that first season. I might get back into it. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still on the fence about it because there was a couple of things that I was not too happy about why I just kind of paused in the middle of the season. But, yeah, if you're a Yashihime Princess fan... Fall season two will be starting up and yeah you can enjoy again next up what might be the last update for the phantom seer manga because apparently phantom seer by togo goto and kento masuda has 150,000 copies in circulation i'm still puzzled as to why they ended this i'm gonna keep being puzzled it seems as though like it was starting to hit a really interesting trajectory of like it might be successful the fact that they're reporting 150,000 copies like what's going on like a part of me 100 believes yeah they got canceled whatever it wasn't selling initially what they thought it would but then it seems like there's more to the story because like the fact that they're even reporting now like yo 150,000 copies if it's that successful why did it end so quickly so something just seems a little off there hopefully this author can bounce back with a different work because this one looked like it was going to go like it needed a little bit more time but it was going to go why they asked it i don't know okay people now this is a big one this is a very very big one because in the upcoming issue of jump giga magazine i showed you guys the cover with todoroki on it they actually did an interview with the author of my hero academia kohei horikoshi and in this interview he dropped a few bombshells about the series ending about the ending being planned out like a couple of different big ones let's read and we'll talk some more but big big stuff incoming kohei horikoshi jump giga spring 2021 interview so they asked which characters will have an important role in this final act the most important ones will be hmm i guess revealing it would be a bit of a spoiler let's just say hawks and ochako will have a surprisingly big role becoming some kind of light of hope for you readers shoji will keep doing his best shinso and monoma may also do some pretty big stuff i'm also planning on an epic scene for sero many characters actions will converge into a single one so maybe the best way to say it would be keep an eye in all of them which automatically i'm looking at it like you named a couple of really irrelevant characters like hawks and ochako dope stuff but like sero so i guess they've really hyped them up although i'm not really sold on shinso monoma like yeah shoji ew, I, don't, I don't know i i feel like he was just dangling a little carrot of like yeah characters that are part of the story are going to be a part of the finale like uh. although that that hawks and ochako one that's interesting certain characters flashbacks were really intense what do you have in mind when you're drawing them in Hawks and Todoroki's family past, I try to emulate the feeling of Shion Sono's works as a director, with no intention of reaching that level of quality, of course. When I set a goal in my mind, I start thinking, how exactly am I going to get there? Then I get in the mood and proceed to draw nonstop. If I don't plan it right, I'll just keep drawing sad stories one after another and get in a gloomy mood. So that's a routine I try to keep for the sake of my mental health. Shoutouts to Horikoshi recognizing methods to staying healthy mentally. Like, that's a really, really big thing. So I'm actually really really happy for him right there that was actually very very big for him as a creator we always talk about the works and shit like that we can't have no my hero academia if you don't have horikoshi you know in tip-top condition so that's really big of him really mature that one drawing from the exhibition is related to the main story and i believe they're talking about the one of ochako falling of uraraka of course falling with deku going to catch her i think that's what they're referring to it is mostly aesthetic so i can't say there will be a scene exactly like that in the future however i drew it while keeping in mind how their relationship would develop if i explored it deeper so it's not entirely unrelated either is this beginning of the final act something you planned a long time ago i had it vaguely planned but started to think about the specifics around volume 21 in the endeavor versus high end fight now let's pause real quick there because i've been saying for a while now that a lot of things changed around that time around that period i honestly feel like the higher ups came down and told horikoshi yeah i know we kind of hyped you up and told you like yo we need you to be the next naruto and shit but yeah we're not gonna go as long as we thought or horikoshi around that time he himself decided I don't want to do this for like, you know, another 10, 20 years. Let me start thinking now. Like I've said it for a long time. I think that that was a pivotal changing moment in my hero. A lot of things sped up real quick. A lot of things that were introduced went by like in a blitz. So yeah, him saying that, that makes a lot of sense that he started thinking about the ending and planning it out around that point. Because I've been saying the manga changed a lot around that time and it's interesting that he's at the very least had the idea of the ending for a long time but that's a whole other discussion regarding that it's not always the best thing in the world for you to keep your ending set in stone because ideas morph 
the narrative sometimes calls for something different, and that's a whole different topic. And I know some people because I didn't give enough, you know, context to why I'm saying this might disagree. But yeah, sometimes having the ending etched in stone isn't the best. But we gotta wait and see. In the most recent chapters, what are the scenes you had the most fun drawing? Definitely Endeavor's face. When, by the way, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! You've been warned. Three, two. One spoiler alert. Definitely Endeavor's face when the Dobby reveal forced him to conciliate both his duty as a hero and his duty as a father. The part where he looked like an old man. I think I did a pretty good job. The editorial department started laughing as soon as they saw the manuscript. Well, I guess that's the expected reaction. He suddenly became an old fart, which, yeah, it was a maturity aspect i don't know why they were laughing but all right and which character are you having the most fun drawing sunagu hakamada aka best genius since his reappearance he has been immensely fun all the time i can't get over how horikoshi drew his neck and that's <laughs> the way he drew his neck is hilarious so i'm imagining he's having fun with it they asked have you already decided the ending he said yes i have the path to it has been longer than i initially expected but the main elements that i've decided before starting the series are still the same so i'm hoping what he's saying by like the main elements is like you know his idea for starters with the anime it's always been narrated from you know Deku's perspective of this is how I became the number one hero maybe that's what he's meaning like yeah I had the idea Deku's gonna be the number one hero and now he's marching towards that and you know there could be multiple variables but it's not like he had you know a certain idea of like the ending is going to be Deku using a certain punch and blah 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 because again the narrative has morphed a lot so we gotta wait and see and now that we've reached the final act show some of your enthusiasm I'll make sure to keep writing a story that the readers will enjoy i'll do my best and deku will too we'll be counting on you and a lot of this interview really just screams out my hero academia is ending a lot sooner than we all anticipated but it is indeed ending like he's talking about final act there might not be no time skip like we all anticipated because a lot of things changed like maybe three years ago there was plans for my hero academia to do go on a lot longer and a lot of different things shonen jump has changed series have come and go like yeah it, it might have changed and again i i honestly attribute a lot to around that time period the whole endeavor fighting the nomu and all that stuff i think that's when things started to morph for the My Hero Academia story. Okay, people, just a small update for Kuroko no Basket fans. Apparently, Netflix is adding Kuroko no Basket's anime season 2 on May 15th. Uh, Netflix is listening that it'll stream the second season based on Taratoshi Fujimaki's Kuroko no Basket manga in the United States on May 15th. Netflix added the first season on January 15th. So, if you're a Kuroko no Basket fan, you watched the first season, you've been, like, interested in watching the second one, it is coming. I'm just wondering when they're gonna add the third season. I guess they're doing it slowly to keep you like yeah i'm gonna just stay you know subscribe to netflix until that third season like very very interesting model but it's clear that that's one of the reasons why they do it like that they released it in increments like yeah now they're gonna stay longer until the next season next up we also just got a small new update for the upcoming yasuke anime yasuke drops on the 29th of april we got a promo poster that just looks insane and the trailer just looks amazing as well now I'll be honest with you. One of the things about the trailer, I will say, I'm a little bit skeptical about the dub. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if it's just because, like, I'm so much more into watching sub now. Or is it maybe that Lakeith Stanfield, he's an incredible actor. But maybe him voicing, doing, like, voiceover isn't the greatest. I don't know. Like, I'm still going to watch the dub, just being honest with you. Because I want to support Lakeith Stanfield. I want them to see, like, yo, uh, we're we doing big things over here. So, I'm definitely going to support and watch it in dub. But I'm just a little bit skeptical because the performance I've heard thus far kind of, like... This is looking like a, a 10 out of 10 looking anime. Like the art is gorgeous. The animation is gorgeous. It's based off a real story and there's a lot of different elements that it just looks like it could be a really, really good thing. Hopefully the dub isn't like, you know, like the, the trailer maybe isn't giving it all. Like maybe there's going to be a really breakdown performance that Lakeith Stanfield is going to do with the Yasuke character. Either way, I'm still very, very hyped. Mappa Studios, like, yo, it's been a little bit since Jujutsu Kaisen. I am very, very excited for this Yasuke anime in two more days, and it'll be a great time, too, because I'll probably do, like, a big review of it just, you know, after I do one big binge of it. And lastly, people, a juggernaut seems to potentially be coming to an end. The Gray Man. It's been running for so many years. It went from Shonen Jump. Like, it's been running for a long time. Apparently, it's potentially coming to an end. Let's read. The Gray Man manga close to reaching, quote-unquote, main point. Hoshino Katsura's The Gray Man manga announces in the upcoming summer 2021 issue of Jump Square Rise that it's drawing close to its story's quote-unquote main point. 
The magazine issue was set to hit stands in Japan July 29, 2021, and D. Gray Man began running in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine initially in May 31st, 2004, up until April 27th of 2009, where it then moved over to Jump Square and ran in multiple spinoffs of the magazine to date, ultimately currently being serialized in Jump Square Rise. In case you don't know, the author of D. Gray Man has had serious health issues, I want to say like heart issues and things like that, so that's why I went from initially Weekly Shonen Jump to Jump Square to I think it was like with Jump Crown and then that magazine itself got axed and then they created Jump Square Rise. Like it's been a long and tough road. I wouldn't be surprised if this really means like maybe only a couple more chapters and it's going to be over. The author's probably like, I've been doing this since 2004. That's 17 freaking years. It would have been great to last to like the 20 year mark, but yo, this author has had some insane health issues. If they want to let it go, it's time. Although in terms of the narrative, that's a whole different story. I am not caught up to D. Gray Man. I am way off from being caught up to D. Gray Man, so I don't know how that would work if it ended in, let's just say, two or three chapters from now. But uh, shout outs to D. Gray Man, and yeah, seems to be coming to a close. It's reaching its point which usually that means like the point of it like the whole idea of why it was created basically it's going to end soon and yeah people those are the stories we have for today's episode i'm curious what you guys think uh for starters the chainsaw man news you think we're gonna get chainsaw man 2 in a couple of days it could be the popularity poll i would love for it to be chainsaw man 2 the promised neverland sales your thoughts on that demon slayer the two characters that they introduced please add more demons and don't make mugen train a dlc which i know they're gonna do damn it uh demon slayer movie on psn i'm not sure now but Last night, it was on there, and a lot of people were buying it. Mashu, 1.4 million copies. Next big hit. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Yashihime Season 2, the fall time. Look out for that. Phantom Seer, awesome sales. Sucks that it got axed. Major My Hero Academia interview about the ending. Insane stuff there. Kuroko no Basket Season 2 hitting Netflix. New Yasuke trailer. I can't wait for Yasuke. And D. Gray Man coming to its main point. Basically getting ready to end soon. Your thoughts on that and your thoughts on any of the stories we covered in today's episode. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of other social media links in the description below i'm from that world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life Bye. have an awesome day peace in and you guys just watched another episode of Bye. have an awesome day <laughs>